All right, welcome back. Um, in this video, we're going to go ahead and calculate our delta u, or our unrestrained, um, unrestrained deformations. All right, and the equation we use for that is s sub u u inverse times our joint load unrestrained column vector. All right, so. First, we need to figure out what S sub UU inverse is. Now, if we look back um, from earlier on, we had this S sub complete matrix. And our S sub UU matrix um, was this matrix right here, right? If we plug this matrix into our calculator and we told our calculator to invert that matrix, or if we just did, if we just did a matrix inversion, um, this is what we would get. We'd get um, here, we'd have 190 over 131, uh, negative 50 over 131, uh, 25 over 131, negative 50 over 131, uh, 220 over 131, uh, negative 110 over 131, 25 over 131, negative 110 over 131, uh, 765 over 262, um, and this would be 1 over EI, right, because we inverted the matrix. Um, and then our joint load unrestrained column vector, we actually calculated up here, this, this guy right here is our 45, negative 45, 75. So we put in uh, 45, negative 45, uh, 75. And if we solve this out, we get the unrestrained deformations happening at the unrestrained degrees of freedom. 12, 6, 7, 5 over 131 negative 20400 zero, 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 over 131 and then 69525 uh, over 262 and again this is all multiplied by 1 over EI. So these uh, correspond to the unrestrained degrees of freedom which were theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 not always is this theta, in this case it is, because our only unrestrained degrees of freedom um, are theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3. So these are the deformations um, happening at the degree of freedom number 1, 2, and 3. And since they're rotational, they're rotational degrees of freedom, right? Um, and then, actually, the next one... Well, I guess we can do the uh, restrained reactions right now as well. Uh, if we wanted to figure out what our restrained, actually, let me let me do that in a different color. Restrained reactions, where our equation for restrained reactions are S sub R U delta U minus joint load. Uh, restrained um, and our um, restrained reactions are basically the reactions happening at the restrained degrees of freedom um, in other words theta 4 theta 5 or delta 5 delta 6 delta 7 delta 8 those are the unrestrained I'm sorry those are the restrained degrees of freedom and we're going to use that restrained reaction equation to figure out what the moment here is at a uh, what the vertical reaction here is at A, what the vertical reaction here at B is, what the vertical reaction um, at C and D are, right? So, in order to do that, the first thing we need is our S sub RU matrix. And then our S sub RU matrix, um, right here, right there, S sub RU is this matrix right here, this 7 by 3 matrix. So I'm going to bring that um, down here and those values were 1 5th 0 0 uh, 3 over 50 0 0 negative 11 over 
600, 1 over 24, 0, negative 1 over 24, uh, 11 over 600, and then you have 3 over 50, and then the last row was um, negative 3 over 50, uh, and negative 3 over 50. And if I said this was a 7 by 3 matrix, um, I don't know why I said that this is actually a 5 by 3 matrix, right? 5 rows, 3 columns. And <clears throat> this has an EI in front of it, right? Our delta unrestrained is this column vector right here, this one that we calculated um, just a short while ago. And those numbers are 12, 6, 7, 5 over 131, negative 2, 0, 4, 0, 0 over 131, and then finally 6, 9, 5, 2, 5 <clears throat> over 262. This is 1 over EI. And then from that, we subtract our JL restrained column vector. And our JL restrained column vector was right here, right? The 75, negative 75, 45, 55, all that uh, we bring down here. And those values, <coughs> again, were negative 75, uh, negative 45, negative 55, uh, negative 55 and negative 45, right? And if we solve all this out, notice that the EIs cancel out, um, our restrained reactions are going to be 94.35 kip foot, 50.80 kips, 46.74 kips, um, 64.04 kips and finally 38.42 kips all right and how do I know this is some of them are kip foot and some of them are kips well they refer to the uh, degrees of freedoms numbers four five six seven eight and if you remember four was um, a rotational degree of freedom <clears throat> A rotational degree of freedom so that becomes a moment right five six seven and eight were all vertical they were all vertical um, degree of freedom so those are just kips right and since all these are positive this means that um, all of our uh, restrained uh, reactions here that we drew are in the correct direction so if I were to uh, redraw this diagram <coughs> Uh, sorry, uh, redraw this diagram, I'd have uh, a fixed end here at A, and it would have a moment of this 94.35 kip foot, right? So this would be 94.35 kip foot. Then you have a reaction here uh, at the fifth degree of freedom, 50.80 kips. Then you had a a roller here, a roller here, and a roller here, right? Let's go ahead and draw the loading as well. You had a point load here of, I believe, 20 kips. Then you had a distributed load here, a distributed load here, right? A uniformly distributed load here. They were both 9 kip per foot. 9 kip per foot. And then for the um, sixth uh, degree of freedom, uh, we had this 46.74, 46.74 kips, and then seven was uh, 64.04 kips, and then finally eight was 38.42 kips, all right? So this is how we use the stiffness method to analyze indeterminate structures. Um, and you know, from this, you can probably go ahead and draw the shear and moment diagram and the moment diagram and all that fun stuff. All right, so I hope this video helped.